this evening we we got um we got cut off sunday um and they wouldn't uh they wouldn't broadcast our facebook live because of uh, music copyrights um we make it known that we don't own the copyrights of the music that we play before the oh, okay. yeah before we before we begin the um worship service but this particular sunday they cut it off and wouldn't uh wouldn't show it live so um we had a few members in the service anyway and what i'm gonna do um i'm gonna slow it down a little bit this evening and teach what we uh preached on sunday so for those that didn't hear it, um, the message on Sunday, we'll break it down to you a little bit deeper this evening. And for those that did hear it, this your double dose. <laughs> ain't, nothing, ain't nothing wrong with a double dose of Jesus, is it? You, you can get too much of anything in this world, but you can't get too much of Jesus. <laughs> Uh, so, um, we're gonna add a little bit, uh, add a little bit to what we were talking about on Sunday. But nevertheless, <clears throat> we're gonna, um, we're gonna be in Mark chapter number two, the Gospel of Mark chapter number two, and um, it's also found in uh, Matthew nine and one, and Luke five and eighteen. But we're gonna be focusing in on Mark. You have to remember when studying the Bible, um, when studying the Bible, especially the New Testament, you have what, what's called the synoptic gospels, meaning that the gospels pretty much tell the same story from a different writer's perspective. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell the, the, the life of Jesus. And so many of the things that you find in Matthew, you'll find in Mark. Luke and John, you'll find the same story, all right, which um, continues to confirm that the gospel is true uh, based upon two or, or more witnesses, all right, so thanks be to God that um, we have witnesses that he walked this earth and, and that he put it in writing for us to read, that's good news. So this evening, Mark chapter number two, um, we're going we're gonna to pull out um, some, some points like we always do this evening. And um, whatever part hits you, just, you know, just, just receive it because it's a lot going on in this story. But um, I'm going to read through it and then we'll, we'll go for, from there. Matthew, I mean, Mark chapter two, verse one and again he entered into Capernaum after some days and it was noise that he was in the house and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them no not so much about the door and he preached the word unto them um and it, they came they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. All right. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Why does this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, I went to the eye doctor. Let me pull this a little closer. Get my glasses in two weeks. Why reason ye these things in your heart? 
whether it's easy to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. But that you may know the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thy house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, we never saw it in this, on this fashion. All right. First of all, um, you got Jesus in the house. And the Bible says there's a bunch of people in the house. So much so that um, people were still trying to come in, but couldn't even come in through the door because there were so many people. All right, and so there was a, a, a sick man on a bed. And this man was sick. He had palsy. We're going to go over that in a little bit. Um, and four men carried him. Four people carried this man on his bed. Okay. Now, I, I don't know if he was living his 600 pound life, whether four people had to carry him or it was just four people trying to make him comfortable on his bed. You know, I don't know. But anyway, they carried him on the bed. Okay. And they couldn't get in the house. But instead of finding excuses of why they couldn't get this man help, they climbed up on the roof, broke the roof open, and lowered the bed down into the house where Jesus was. All right. I'm just trying to get a, a story in a nutshell, and we're going to go back and, and, and look at some things. All right. So when Jesus saw that, he... um. He, he didn't address the man because of his faith. He addressed the man on the bed because of the faith of his friends. All right, we're going to go over this thing tonight. This thing going to get deep. I hope not, I hope y'all don't cut me off because I get so deep. <laughs> uh, so Jesus said, son, he said, son, your sins are forgiven. All right. And so now in comes the religious leaders always looking for something wrong. They religious, but they don't care about the people's well-being. And you got people like that in the world today. They always trying to find fault and something wrong with what's going on. Don't never see the good. They always trying to pick out the wrong. Say, um, Nobody can forgive sins but God. This this man, Jesus, he, he's speaking blasphemy. All right? Because they didn't believe he was the Messiah. Okay? So, Jesus, because he can read your heart, he can read your mind, he can perceive what you're thinking, you know, you ain't even got to say nothing. And so he asked them, why are you thinking, why are you reasoning these things in your heart? Which one is easier for me to say? Son, I forgive you of your sins or arise and take up your bed and walk. Which one is easier for me to say? Now, quite obviously, it's easier for somebody to say your sins are for forgiven because really you can't even see no evidence. You can't see. I can say your sin is forgiven and you can't see no evidence of that happening. So Jesus, Jesus followed it up. He said that you may know that the Son of Man has power. In her, he said to the, the sick man on the bed, arise and take up your bed and walk. Go into your house. <laughs> and immediately that man got up out the bed, arose and went his way. Ain't that good news? <laughs> so that's the that's the um, the meat of this story. OK, and you can picture all that in your mind. And so what do we get out of this? First of all, I want you to understand people of God. All right. Just because you accept Jesus in your life don't mean everything going to be perfect. Life is still life. Life is still got to be lived. Life is still unfair. Life still happens out of nowhere. You just got to live. You still got to live life even though you accept Jesus as your savior. 
The only difference is he gives you a different perspective on life and he walks with you and strengthens you through every aspect of your life. So you're never walking alone. All right. So we're going to look at this um, through this man's eyes. Sometimes we get sick. All right. And that, you know, sickness is not necessarily saying you did something wrong. You may be doing everything right and sickness come. And that not, not necessarily a physical ailment. As we're going to see in a, in a, in a few minutes, um, sickness or, or trials or tribulations, something happening to you out of the ordinary. Okay? Things like that just happen to us in this life that we live. And if you ain't lived long enough for something happen, to happen to you out of the ordinary, some kind of sickness happen to you, just keep on living. That's what I was told. Just keep on living. <laughs> And you're going to find out for yourself that things happen in life and, and sometimes things that you, you, you really don't want to happen, you really wish didn't happen, but it happens, okay? Because that's how life goes, okay? So, this man was sick. I want you to understand, Jesus said in uh, John 11 and, 4, 11 and 4, he said, all sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Okay? Understand something. Whenever sickness or pain or, or, or some kind of irregularity or some kind of um, something uncomfortable happens to you, something that makes you change your direction, something that just happens out of the ordinary, something happens in your life, uh, some type of calamity, that don't necessarily mean that, that the devil did it or that you about to die. Okay? Understand, sometimes things happen and it's an underlying purpose for everything that God allows you to go through. Praise be to God for that. All right? Even the painful situation. If you trust in God, you may not understand it at the time why you're going through it, but if you trust God, it's going to work for your good, and, and God is going to get the glory out of your life, okay? We're going to look at this thing this evening, okay? I want somebody to be encouraged this evening. Though your, your, your situation may be painful, God's going to work it out. He's going to work it out. Continue to trust Him. He is going to work it out. All sickness is not unto death. Sometimes your issue is not just for your uh, benefit, okay, after God fixes it. it. It's just not for you. Sometimes it's to help others know that God is real. And he entrusts you to go through the situation because he knows you're going to trust in him. Whew, boy, I tell you. See, everybody ain't going to let God work through them. And then after they come out of it, they ain't going to give him glory. But God entrusts you, just like he entrusted Job. He asked, this, he asked Satan, do you, have you considered my servant Job? He would have never, God would have never said that about Job if he didn't believe that Job would have faith in him to the end. Y'all with me? And God would not allow you to go through some of the things you go through if he knew you was going to give up. God entrusts you because he knows you're going to keep the faith. And at the end, it's going to be better with you than the beginning. You just got to hold on through the storm and God's going to bless you at the end. Okay. And not only you, but everybody who is connected to you. Okay. Hmm. All sickness is not unto death. Sometimes it shows, sometimes sicknesses show what you made of. Okay. Whether you just all talk about God and Jesus and faith and this and that, or you mean what you say. Whether you have the faith for real, whether you have a relationship with God, or you just talking that talk. Troubling situations will bring out the truth about who you really are. Do I have a witness? 
somewhere in listening land this evening. <laughs> you can be all you can be all churchy all you want to, but when hard times come, that's gonna tell the story whether or not you know where your help come from. Anybody can say Jesus is my Lord as long as everything going well. But when trouble comes, can you still say Jesus is my light and my salvation? Jesus is my all in all. Lord, I'm going to trust you even through the storm. All right. <laughs> all right. So the next thing, uh, sickness. And when I say sickness, it, 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 it just brings on the whole spectrum of Heartache and pain and trouble and tribulation. When I say sickness, I'm saying sickness because of the story that we are dealing with this evening. Okay. So, uh, sickness and pain also shows who your true friends are. All right. Yes. Now you pay attention. Mm -hmm. You can get all the phone calls. You can get all the, Oh, I'm praying for you. I love you. I care about you. I'm, I come to see you. Let's go out and have a good time when things are well. But get sick. Get broke. Get broken. Do something wrong and now you, you know, you embarrassed, you shame. Where your friends at then? You'll find out how many, you might have an entourage as long as everything all right. But see how many friends you got when things go wrong. Boy, that, that, that friend list go, <laughs> that friend list go droop. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So let me move on to the next point. We're going to bring all these points out as we go back through the story. Okay. Um, sickness and pain, uh, sh shows or manifests God's power, his favor, and his glory in your life. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, when you're going through pain and suffering, when you're going through any kind of suffering or painful situation, if you can trust God and keep the faith through it, God's favor, his glory, and his power is going to be made manifest through your life. Everybody's going to be able to see who it is that's working in you because it ain't no way you can maintain your faith. You can maintain your sanity with some of the things that some of us go through. Ain't no way you could do that without trusting in almighty God and his glory is going to be made manifest in your life. Amen. <laughs> you ain't going to, you ain't going to say, Oh, I'm lucky. No, you ain't lucky. I'm blessed. My God is making a way for me. He giving me strength to go through what I'm going through. And I'm going to make it through this storm because he is my God. <laughs> Anybody else been through the storm and found out he's a, he's a shelter in the time of a storm? How you know he a shelter in the time of a storm if you ain't never been through no storm? <laughs> Lord, have mercy. He's a mighty fortress. He's a battle axe in the time of a battle. How you know if you ain't never been in no battle? <laughs> oh, do I have some witnesses in this in this place tonight? Mm. So, the final thing we're going to look at when you're going through suffering, not only does God show up in your life or make himself manifest in your life as you go through all right. Your testimony will begin to let others know about the power of Almighty God. See, that's key. How is this world going to know that God is a redeemer, that he is a God that takes care and provides for his people, that he carries his people, that he's faithful to his word? He got to have somebody trusting in him. See, these religious people, and I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I want to make this example. These religious people looking at Jesus in the house, instead of praising the Lord and giving God glory that this man's sins are forgiven, they find in fault. Yeah. 
You see? But see, but when Jesus told that man to get up and, 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 and walk, and he got up and walked, then the people began to look and say, we ain't never seen it done like this before. <laughs> but God had to, God had to use somebody. Brothers and sisters, your sickness, you ain't going to be sick and in pain your whole life. God is going to reveal his power through your life. Just hold on a little while longer. <laughs> Let me, okay, let's, let, now let's backtrack. Let's backtrack. And we're going to bring all these points to, uh, to light. All these points to light through this story that we just read. Okay. So, uh, again, Jesus was in the house and the house was full of people. All right. And Jesus main focus was not what these people had on. His focus wasn't grab the, the plate, pass the plate around with all these people. I'm, I'm sure we can raise some money up in here. <laughs> See y'all preachers, y'all gotta y'all gotta get y'all y'all head out that plate. If if it ain't the the offering plate, it's the it's the revival repast plate that you want to get after the service. See, get your head out the plate. <laughs> Be more concerned about the people's soul. Jesus, his only his only purpose. Was to preach the word into all these people. Lord have mercy. The Bible says he saw these people in there. And the Bible says he preached the word. He preached unto them. That's good news. See brothers and sisters. We all want blessings from God. We, we want to be, and, and hopefully all Christians want to be, um, we, we want to get to the place where we become more like Jesus. Okay? And the only way you're going to know how to become like Jesus is through his word. How to, how to conduct yourself. How to treat people. How to manage your money. How to handle your resources. You know, how to worship. How to praise the Lord. How we ought to face every new day. How we ought to, you know, how we ought to be at the end of the day. The Bible says the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. The name of the Lord should be praised. It tells us everything in the word of God. So before you get these blessings, God's going to put his word in you first. Before he send you out on a mission, he going to get his word into you first. All right. So he preached the word unto them. Now, here come this sick man, sick of palsy. All right. Uh, and I'm, I'm going to make this little note here to my brother, uh, brother Blackwell. I don't have no copyright. So I just, just say a preacher said it. Okay. All right. So I'm going to move on. <laughs> Um, so the, the, the man was sick of palsy and four people brought him in on a the bed. They couldn't get in through the door. So they climbed up on the roof and they lowered him down to Jesus. Now, like I said, sickness and pain and trouble will show you who your true friends are. It's good to know that this man had at least four friends that would not give up on him. Now, how many of us tonight can say we got at least four friends? Mm. I ain't say you got four children or four uh, whatevers. <laughs> <laughs> four associates. You know, four people you know. I'm talking about this man couldn't do nothing for himself. But these four people thought enough, sacrificed their time, their effort, their energy. When they saw they couldn't get help one way, they climbed up another way. They went all the way just to make sure we're not going to leave here until we make sure you get some help. Now, how many of y'all got friends like that? When you can't do absolutely nothing for them, 
they going to go all the way for you. And I'm going to flip that on you. How many of you are a friend to somebody like that? Now, if you ain't no friend, don't expect nobody to be friendly to you. <laughs> uh, the Bible says uh, a man that, 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 that has friends must show himself friendly. <laughs> that wasn't Confucius. That was the Bible. <laughs> Lord, help us today. But this man, uh, he couldn't do nothing for himself. He had palsy. All right. But they, they found a way to get this man to Jesus. That's good news. And, and I thank God. I, 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 in my mind, I can think I got at least mm, four friends. And I say that very loosely because I, things are going quite well in my life right now. And I don't, praise the Lord, I, I don't know what his will is, but I hope he don't have to take me through a, a palsy situation to show me who my friends are. <laughs> uh, let me move on here. Brothers and sisters, um, this man had palsy. Now, I'm going I'm to I'm stop right here and break this thing down on palsy like I did on Sunday. All right. Bring out some points about um, this man having palsy. Palsy rever refers to uh, several types of um, paralysis. Um, whether it's... Uh, Completely paralyzed or partially. Okay. Now make a note of that. Also, palsy is accompanied by weakness. All right. Paralysis accompanied by weakness. And it's also uh, palsy, the loss of feeling. Okay. The loss of feeling. Palsy also is accompanied by uncontrolled body movement, uh, like shaking. And I guess if you lost a feeling, you won't even know that body part is shaking. See, that's how palsy works. So, and back then, if you, you know, you was paralyzed, they ain't have all the technology we have today where, you know, some people are paralyzed from the neck down and they can put something, you know, a controller in their mouth and, um, control a wheelchair or, or some other device to, to still make them mobile. Okay. Yeah. But see back then they didn't have that. So you can imagine if this man was laying paralyzed, whether partially or completely, uh, or, uh, completely, the Bible don't make it clear, but it does say he had palsy. So he had a, a complicated problem. Okay. Yeah. Um, and he had to be carried around. Okay. So uh, we, that, that's his physical condition. But if we look at this thing spiritually. You have people with spiritual palsy. Even today. And we're going to look at these symptoms again. And look and see if you brothers and sisters may have spiritual palsy. Alright. Spiritual palsy. Has the same symptom. You paralyzed. You spiritually paralyzed. Alright. Paralyzed mm -hmm. meaning. You render incapable. Of action. <laughs> Lord have mercy. And how many Christians. Are paralyzed. Either partially. Or completely. Tonight. You incapable. Of any kind of action. When God tells you to go. You paralyzed. You don't move. No movement whatsoever. You you have spiritual spiritual palsy. Okay. You want somebody to carry you. When in essence you can do it, but spiritually you paralyzed. Lord have mercy. You render incapable of any movement or action. How many of us are, have been in the same place for X amount of years? 
We ain't grown. We ain't moved. We ain't no action. And we instead of asking God for blessings, we instead of asking God for this and this, and God opens doors. He said, I, I'll open doors that no man can close, but the door right there, wide open for you, but you spiritually paralyzed. You're incapable of any kind of movement. You won't even go in the door. You got palsy tonight. Let's move on. Palsy, paralysis, accompanied by weakness. All right? We paralyze and we weak. Anybody weak this evening? We all get weak when we're going through our situations. Yeah. Spiritually, we have a weakness. Everybody got a weakness in us. But let me share this with you, my brothers and sisters. The only way you're going to be able to overcome that weakness, and I discussed this before in a whole lesson, you got to acknowledge that you're weak. Yeah. You can't just brush it aside and, and, you know, put all your strengths out there for everybody to see. Meanwhile, when you get all alone, that weakness takes over you. That's what's stronger than everything else. Until you deal with that weakness, you ain't no stronger than your weakness. Because, brothers and sisters, if you don't cope with it, you don't deal with it and strengthen it, it's going to be the very thing that constantly pulls you down no matter how the rest of your life is strengthened. All right. There was a, 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 I believe it was Greek, Greek mythology. Um, a, a woman had a baby and named him Achilles. And she dipped him in the water, some water or some kind of liquid. And she held him by his heel. Okay. And the, the, the water made him invincible. In other words, no matter where the arrows or the swords hit him, his skin was impenetrable. He was, you know, he was the ultimate warrior. But he had one weakness, and it was that heel. And that's where we get that saying, the Achilles heel. And, and, and brothers and sisters, if you don't deal with that Achilles heel that you have, the enemy going to steady exploit you using that weakness. That's the thing that's going to constantly bring you down. You can be as blessed as you want to be. But when the enemy hit that weakness, that weak spot in you, because you ain't never dealt with it, you ain't never faced it and overcame it, it's going to be that one thing that bring everything. You ain't going to care about nothing else. It's going to be that one thing that bring your whole life down. And some of us right now, we depressed about one thing. We got so many blessings all around us, but that one weakness is tearing us up. Lord, help us today. But God got an answer for, for, for palsy. If you paralyzed, if you weak, God got an answer for it. <laughs> Let me move on here. Palsy was also accompanied by the loss of feeling. All right. So um, <clears throat> you look at our world today. People don't care. They, Lord Hammers, people just don't care. They don't, children don't care what they say to their elders. Elders don't care what they say to the children. It made me sick on my stomach. I was working in a house today. Young boy was on um on the you know on the computer in the in the house, and and the mama was just cussing the kid out. Like like he was grown. And I'm I'm listening, I'm like, Lord, should I say something? Lord should, you know. I'm just here to work. But <laughs> <laughs> it's just people don't care. The heart of the people has no feeling. That's the reason why people, you know, you know. People out here killing one another for no reason. Like a war going on or something. Like we're in a third world country. Just no feeling at all. Just spiritual palsy. But the Bible says in the last days, 
the love of many will wax cold. Love don't even mean the same thing to people no more. Lord, have mercy. Let me move on here. But some of us got spiritual palsy. We, don't, we, ain't, we done lost our feeling. And sometimes it's understood in the natural because when you're hurt over and over and over, even church hurt, parent, parental hurt, you know, people disappoint you that you had confidence in and hurt, hurt, hurt over and over. At some point, you just lose all feeling. Like, I just don't care. That's spiritual palsy tonight. We, we ill. We're sick. We're on a bed of affliction. And many of us don't even know it. But hopefully these symptoms. And Jesus got a, he got a prescription for all these symptoms of palsy. <laughs> Alright, the last thing. Uh, palsy was associated with uncontrolled body movement. Or shaking. All right. And how many of us. With that spiritual palsy. Got uncontrolled body movements tonight. We ain't got no control. Just out of control. We spend our money out of control. We run our mouth out of control. Our body just out of control. Just out of control. Ain't no control. That's that spiritual power. I want to do this, but you know, like, well, I ain't going to say that. I ain't even going to say that. We want to do this, but then, you know, we follow after the, 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 you know, what the flesh is, is yearning. Okay. The flesh is yearning. That's spiritual power. We ain't got no control over ourselves. We'll say anything to anybody. Just no, no control. But the good news is. Y'all know I got to leave you with good news tonight. The good news is. Jesus got the cure for palsy. <laughs> Hallelujah. No matter what you're going through. Jesus got a cure for it. Alright. So. Remember. That all sickness is not unto death. This man's sickness was not going to take him out. Because in this divine timing, it was set up like this. In this divine timing, the Bible says, And again, Jesus entered into Capernaum after some days. Okay? Now keep that in mind. Again, he, he, he entered into Capernaum. After some days. And and don't you know God got. He got it divinely set up. For you to meet up with your blessing. Lord have mercy. <laughs> you you ought to just. When, when we finish tonight. You ought to just meditate on that. God's got your blessing. Set up for you. But it's just a matter of you. Meeting up with your destiny. That's good news. After, after a certain amount of time, Jesus entered back into the city. He, he could have went on to another city. And he would have never met this man. He could have went to some other house where these four people may not have been able to come to. But here, it was set up. It was div divinely set up. For this man to receive something from Jesus. And it was not just for him. I'm going to deal with him. And then I'm going to deal with another uh, purpose. For God's blessings in our lives. Okay. So. it was it, at, at this time. The Bible said they lowered him down to Jesus. Jesus said your sins are forgiven. Um, why are we. So. So focused on earthly things first. We got it all twisted. Believers, Christians, your main objective 
should always be to please Jesus Christ, to be in his will. You should always be interested in giving God glory out of your life. Jesus didn't say, arise, take up your bed and walk first. No. He might have forgotten all about Jesus. He might have just went away and, and he got healed, but his sins were still there. And see, many of us, we getting stuff. We get new cars. We get new houses. We got a new boo. We got good health now. We, we in a portion of our right mind. Everything working in our favor. You know, we got a good job. Things going good. But our sins are still there. We ain't dealt with that. And so we're going to have all this stuff and die and <laughs> go straight on to hell. And that stuff going to be right back here left. And then all them people you thought were going to take care of it and remember you buy it. That stuff going to be on the market. <laughs> <laughs> All that land you work hard for, them children, they don't want now acre. They want that green. <laughs> this ain't, look, this ain't 1960 no more. Things done changed. People don't hold on to stuff like that no more. Your, your earrings and all that, they don't, they don't want all that. How much them things worth? <laughs> Oh my God, help us Jesus. But Jesus' main concern was this man's sin. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. Let me deal with that first. There was 10 lepers crying out, Lord, uh, help us, heal us. Because they knew the custom was you couldn't come near people if you had leprosy. All right. Yeah. So they cried out from afar, from a distance. And said, heal us, heal us, Jesus. And Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And while they were going, the Bible says the leprosy started to clean, to clean up out of them. They started to be healed of their leprosy. And the Bible says, don't you know, it was only one out of those ten that came back and said, Lord, I thank you. And that was the only one. He said, go your way. Uh, your faith has made you whole. And see, many of us, we got, we getting stuff, but we missing salvation. Yeah. We missing the true healing. Mm -hmm. Healing ain't always in your physical body. You can be as sick as you want to be. You can have stage four cancer in this physical body, but you can be healed in your spirit and be in a right relationship with God. That's what matters. Because on the other shore, there's a tree with leaves on it, good for the healing of the nation. Over yonder, ain't no more pain, no more sickness, no more sorrow, no more tears. <laughs> Hallelujah. We'll be, we'll be where the wicked will cease from troubling us. And the weary will be at rest. That's good news tonight. So we got to be focused on our relationship with God, our condition. You may not have physical palsy. You may be able to move around and, and do everything you want. But how many of us have all those symptoms of spiritual palsy tonight that we need to be healed from? We paralyzed. We can't move in the name of Jesus. We, we done lost our feeling. We don't care about stuff no more. No, no sympathy for people. Amen. We got uncontrolled body movement. We do anything, say anything. God ain't even got no governor over us. We do what we want to do. We out of control. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. But we, you know, God is a healer. And it ain't all the way, always about sp uh, physical healing. But Jesus spoke to this man and said, look, your sins are forgiven. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I'd rather have Jesus and the thing than the things and not Jesus. <laughs> let, me share, let me share this with you. I'm, I'm going to make my final point. 
when we, we want to hear Jesus say, well done. But don't you know, after in the Bible, when, when Jesus says that, well done, he says, thou good and faithful servant. So just because he say well done don't mean necessarily that you have served him. Now a steak can get well done, but you know what you know how it get well done in the fire. <laughs> oh my God. Some of us gonna be well done, but it ain't gonna be that good and faithful servant. You're gonna be well done in the fire. That's why we gotta get our business fixed. We got to get right with God first. Mm -hmm. All right. So finally, Jesus said, after, <clears throat> again, when you are in a troublesome situation, you find out who your true friends are, who really had your back. Now, these scribes that was in that house, they didn't have that man's back. They didn't have his, his best interest at heart. They ain't care nothing about Jesus saying your sins are forgiven. And how many times have we looked, especially when people have a testimony, I want to be saved, or, you know, when the church doors was open and somebody come to the altar and say, uh, Pastor, I need prayer, or I want to be saved. I want God to change my life. How many of us have sat in judgment on these people? We worry about what they had on. We worry about what we just heard about them doing last night. Coming church smelling like liquor, looking like they just got off a pole, and we judging them instead of saying, praise God, at least they at the altar, at least God is moving in their heart, at least they acknowledging there is a God, and they know they need help. We don't say it that. We judging them, condemning them. When we should be rejoicing and thanking God that they even at least come into the altar. Amen. So these scribes, instead of rejoicing with this man and saying, you know, um, praise God, his sins are forgiven. They saying, Jesus speaking blasphemies. So Jesus, need, he, he went a little further. He he began to show forth the power of God in that man's life. That they may know that God has power in the earth. And see, my brothers and sisters, your life is going to be a light to these people that don't know the power of God. God is going to manifest his power, his favor, his, his, he's going to show forth his glory through your life. And people in this world going to know that God is able. And when they hit rock bottom, they going to realize then who is that rock at the bottom. <laughs> and it's Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Jesus told his man, and this is your prescription tonight. But for all of you that have that spiritual palsy, Jesus told that man, arise, take up your bed, and go your way. Thank you, Jesus. I can recall, and I pause there because I can just recall, I can just see myself laying on a bed of, of affliction. In sin, in doubt in misery on that bed of, of affliction. Spiritually, I was dead. I was sick, sin sick. Physically, I was at the top of my life. I was at the, the peak of my life. My health, my strength, everything going my way. But spiritually, I was dead and sick. But Jesus, Told me to arise. To arise is to get up. Brothers and sisters, stop laying on your bed of affliction. It's got power over you right now. Because you are giving it power. The Bible said Jesus commanded him, arise. Get up. Take up your bed. 
take authority over what's got you down. Take authority over it. You have the power in the name of Jesus. Take authority over it. And take your bed with you so you can show everybody, look, this is what I used to lay on, but I am not laying on no bed no more. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. And the Bible say immediately he arose. It ain't something you got to think about. It ain't something you got to, you know, contemplate. Something you got to, well, I, I, I might take it up tomorrow. I um, let me let me see let me see how I go this weekend. I might pick, I might take my bed up Sunday or next week. I I see. Let me see. See, you ain't gonna never get out of that bed. You keep thinking like that. The Bible said he ain't think twice about it. Something moved in him, and immediately, I need y'all to holler. I need y'all to shout. Let. If, if you rhyme people, let them think you're crazy right now. Just say immediately. Immediately. <laughs> immediately. I need to do some things immediately. I can't put this thing off no longer. You going to miss your blessing. You in his presence right now. What more do you need for your situation to change? Immediately. You got to move. It's here now. You in his presence. He's speaking to you right now. You got to make the change. God done done everything. He done made it known that you can make a change. You got to do it now. Jesus ain't lift him up. Immediately he took up his own bed. Yeah. Lord have mercy. Brothers and sisters, I thank God for you. I thank God for you. I praise God for you. I pray for each and every one of you. And I hope this, this word has encouraged your heart. Um, Y'all have to forgive me. I'll be on the lighter side sometime. But, you know, that's just my character. But I'll be serious too. <laughs> I pray this word encourages your heart. Your, your situation ain't always going to be how it is. All you need, take this word and hear it. Not just in your ears, but hear it down in your spirit. God is telling you tonight. And I'm going to end on this. Arise. Take up your bed. And walk. You have the authority. You have the power. In the name of Jesus. And your situation can begin to change right now. If you take the initiative. And move immediately. God will assist you. His power will assist you. And you will just take that. Take that jump right now. Take that, take that opportunity right now and move immediately. Arise. Get up. Take control. Take authority over your life. And start walking in the path that God has laid for you. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. I love you tonight. But more importantly, God loves you more. God bless you.